Howdy folks, welcome to the channel. Not gonna waste any time, we're just gonna get right into the video here. So, Roscoe, this is my daily driver. It's a 2008 Crown Vic, it's a great car, except for one thing, it's got an open differential. So check this out, right here on your driver door sticker, you'll see the word axle and a number right below it. That says Z5 right below it. That is the code for an open differential. There's a few other codes for open differential, but the code for a limited slip differential, a factory track lock differential from Ford is X5. Now I was perusing around the junkyard the other day and I stumbled upon a Crown Victoria that had that door code. So I went ahead and pulled the rear end out of it because this differential right here has a Ford track lock limited slip differential in it. So. We're gonna go ahead and swap these guys out today. So you're gonna see how to remove and replace the entire rear end on a 2008 Ford Crown Victoria. This is gonna to apply to most Crown Victorias, but especially 2003 to 2011. All of those are gonna be the exact same process that I'm showing you right here. So let's get right into it. One thing I do wanna mention is I'm gonna be switching back and forth from the GoPro to the iPhone here. So you are definitely gonna notice that in the audio and I wanna apologize in advance. The audio is not gonna be great. So let's just get right into this. All right, so the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is jack this car up and get it up high on jack stands because we're gonna want lots of room to work underneath there. All right, and I'll just leave this jack under here, kind of helping with the load a little bit, because why not? I don't need it just yet. So next order of business is going to be taking this tire off. I'm going to grab a screwdriver, pop this hubcap off, and then they're 21 millimeter lug nuts all the way around. All right, next up, we're going to get this caliper off of the rear brake here. So it's gonna be two 10 millimeter bolts, one right here and one on the bottom. And once you get those two bolts out of the way, you can just kind of take a screwdriver and wedge it in the top and pry it out. Just make sure you push down this little spring right here because that'll pe prevent you from rotating this caliper out of the bracket. So I'm gonna find something to hang this up real quick and then we'll be good to go on to the next step. should come right off if it doesn't you can take a hammer and uh, just start beating it off just start beating it off start beating it off we got to get this e-brake stuff off here. so what we're gonna do first is we'll take a needle nose plier and we'll go in here and we'll take off so I have a look at that green spring right in there we're gonna take that green spring with our needle nose pliers and pry it out of its little hole right here Now, typically, that is easier said than done, but there it goes. So, that springs out. There it is right there. Now, we'll go over the other side here, and we'll take this spring out as well. All right, and there's that one. So, with both springs out, we just want to remember that the small spring goes on the adjuster side, and the big green screen goes, and the big green spring goes on the e-brake side. This right here is the e-brake pin right here. When you pull on the e-brake, that's what expands and opens up your brake shoes. So, next order of business here is going to be to push this clip in right here and rotate that pin. So I'm going to switch back to the GoPro here because I don't need to be so up close and personal. Alrighty, so there's a clip right here on the top and there's one on the bottom. What I'll do is I'll take it and push it inward and then rotate this pin and then comes right off. There's the top shoe. Push it inward and then we'll take this pin and rotate it. Actually, I probably don't even need to push on it. I can probably just rotate that pin. Yep, there it goes. All right, now the last piece we need to take out is this guy right here and it's easy. You just lift up on it and kind of wiggle it out of the emergency brake line because there's just a little square tab in there or rather a square notch that lines up with a pin on this piece right here and you just got to wiggle it right out that's all it takes a little bit of wiggling there it goes and then i can angle this upward and pull that right out and then we'll pull this e-brake line right out of the back. 
We'll set that line aside for now. Okay, that's all the disassembly we need to do as far as the brakes go. The rest of it is going to be suspension. So I'm going to go over to the other side for now and uh, start taking the brakes apart and get to this point on the other side as well. All right, so there's one thing I forgot to mention over here, and that is going to be your wheel speed sensor. It's just one 10 millimeter bolt right here. And we'll just latch onto it and just zip it right out. Just kind of twist it back and forth and pull it out at the same time. If it's giving you troubles, like mine did, on the other side did, mine was pretty seized in there, you can grab onto it with a pair of channel locks or pliers from the outside and do the same thing I'm doing right now. Wiggle it back and forth and shove on it with a screwdriver from this side. So it's not usually too bad to get out, but if you live in the rust belt, it might be a little bit, might be a little bit worse. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start disconnecting this drive line real quick. It's gonna be a 12 millimeter, 12 point wrench or socket. Uh, I just got a wrench right here because I'm gonna use a breaker bar. So I got my wrench and a piece of one inch galvanized steel pipe. And I'm just gonna break it loose. My jack's right in the way. That one's not very tight. The one at the junkyard was freaking crazy tight. So I just assumed I would need the breaker bar, but actually these ones are not too bad. And number four is loose. All right, sweet. So all these came loose pretty easily. I was backing the rest of the way out and then I'll carefully drop this drive line down. There it goes. All right. It does have a little lip right there that it has to work over so it won't fall straight down necessarily unless it's already not seized on there. So just got to work with it a little bit and it'll come off. And while we're down underneath here by the drive line, we'll go ahead and take this bolt off right here, way up on top of your Watts link right here that's attached to your differential. That's going to be a 15 16 and just break that thing loose. I already broke it loose and it's coming free but just be weary that the differential will start to come down as you loosen that bolt up you see the gap opening up on the bottom side there so just again keep yourself out of the way kind of stay more towards the suspension and it's better to do all this first while all the suspension's still hooked up so that this thing can't fall on you so so just be careful As this differential starts to come down and once this bolts comes free I'm sure this will jump a little bit but no I guess not It'll pop right off there there we go see watch link disconnected all right guys let's recap what we got done so far so we have all the brake parts removed it's stripped down to just basically the axle poking through right here all the brake parts are taken off we have the e-brake line that comes through the back of this uh, this shield right here is pulled out and it's set aside right here. So just keep that aside. And then we also have our wheel speed sensors removed. Then we went underneath the car, we disconnected the drive line there. And then we also took our Watts link off of its stud right there. So the Watts link is now disconnected. The only thing left holding this, the only thing left holding this rear end in is these two links right here, one, Two on the bottom, the, uh, the shock right here, and then the sway bar. So once we detach all four of those points, this thing should start to come down. So there's a couple other spots where the emergency brake wire is attached. So we're going to disconnect it from those couple points there before this thing will be able to come all the way out. But we're getting pretty close. All we have, like I said, is we've got to take this thing out, that one out. And then we got to disconnect this shock right here from the bottom and then the sway bar down there and this thing is ready to come out. I got the, I got a ratchet strap hooked up to the trunk right here and just this little hole on this side and same thing on this side. I'm utilizing this hole right here and it runs down and it attaches to the axle and just runs around it. It's just an extra little safety safety right there so uh that in case it does fall or whatever or the jacks don't hold it or it rolls off the jack somehow it's still being held on by this so the next order of business here so the only thing really left to do here 
once you get all the brake stuff taken off the drive line and the watts link disconnected is to go under here and right here you'll see is your sway bar and you want to unbolt your sway bar end link that's right there that's a 14 millimeter bolt just zip that off with a impact gun or you can use a wrench and just hold on to this shaft right here because it might start twisting on you take that bolt off then we're going to remove this bolt right here it's an 18 so we'll just remove that with an 18 and a 15. then up here we have this upper control arm bolt you don't have to back that up because it has this tab on it as you're loosening it up it'll start to swing over to the other side and hit right here and it will back itself up so you don't need to worry about backing that bolt up but the back side here is a 15 millimeter bolt and you'll just take your ratchet back here and unscrew that <clears throat> and then for this bottom one it's going to be a 21 millimeter bolt on this side and then a, what is it, a 19 millimeter? Oh no, it's an 18 on the other side. So you're gonna back it up with an 18 millimeter on the back side and then take off this 21 millimeter bolt right there. Once you unbolt these four points, one, two, three, and four, the sway bar down there, you can slowly drop this thing down and then wiggle it out. And if your shock is in the way, you don't have your car jacked up high enough, just compress your shock a little bit and then move it up over the axle and then let it decompress and it'll hold back there. So uh, anyway, just uh, let it go down slowly, watch it the whole way, have a hand on it, all that stuff, and then uh, slide it back out. So we just used one jack right there that has the, uh, the two-point splitter thing. And uh, yeah, simple as that. So now all we gotta do is take the diff cover off of that one, put it onto that one and put this in there. I have the new rear end strapped up to the jack here, all ready to put back in. So I'm gonna get the GoPro set up to where you guys can see everything. And then we'll start wiggling this into Roscoe's rear end or wriggling, wriggling Roscoe. And this will, we're gonna put this rear end in Roscoe. All right, caught myself there, almost forgot to put the coil springs in. So I'm gonna let the axle back down just a little ways. I'm gonna let the axle back down just a little ways and throw those uh, springs into place. How about there? So I'll take the spring and I'll fish it in here. 